I've been looking, I've been looking forward to this for a long time, Stefan. Well, thank you for having me finally. <laughs> it's Steph, Stefan Yost. He's the director of the uh, of the uh, uh, Honolulu Academy of Art, now the Honolulu Art Museum. Honolulu Museum of Art. Museum of Art. Okay. I can I want tell to get you that, that right because it changed recently. Well, actually, we went back to the original name. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, tell us the history of so, it. So, um, on a rice cook incorporated it in the early 1920s as the Honolulu Museum of Art. And then uh, in 1927, the year it opened, she decided to call it the Honolulu Academy of Arts. And so about four years ago, we rebranded ourselves back to the Honolulu Museum of Art. But I should let you know, um, we didn't legally change our name. It's still the Honolulu Academy <laughs> of the Arts. TBA. And doing business as. And I'm fine if people call us the Academy. That's yeah, fine. But yeah, we're, yeah. let's call us the Honolulu Museum of Art today, though. Why, why, did, you, why did you go back? Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, the top of response to uh, the name the Honolulu Academy of Arts for first-time visitors to Hawaii was, I've never been to an art school on vacation. <laughs> it's very simple. You, you, you have an extra hurdle to communicate with first-time visitors because um, they think you're in art school and they have no idea why you're asking them to go to an art school on vacation. It's pretty simple. I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that, but okay. Yeah, no, okay. I mean, there's no reason why you think the Honolulu Academy was a museum, yeah. right? Um, unless you're from here or spent a lot of time here. So yeah. uh, we changed it, and of that said, if, if people use Academy, I'm, I'm fine it's with that. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Is there are those, and there are those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But now you have several little, you know, you have a lot of things, so I wanted to spend a minute and just sure. articulate what, so you have the academy itself, may I call it that? Sure. The academy itself. Um, and then you have to the right, uh, that would be on the Diamond Head side, yeah. this wonderful old building, looks yeah. like around 1870 or something. Um, wonderful. About turn of the century. It's, it's the, the century. former high school um, for Honolulu, oh. and then it became um, McKinley. High school, and yeah. then it became an elementary school, Lincoln Elementary School, and now yeah. it's a Honolulu Museum of Art school. Yeah. But everybody calls it Lenakona, uh, and then we have the door Lincoln yeah. Yeah, exactly in Hawaiian. So it's an English standard language school, Perfect. and so people yeah. call it Lenakona great, just to great. change it back. Um, so what is, what is it architecturally though? I really like it. Uh, well, it's cast. It's you know it's turn of the century, but it's um, it's early 19th. Hundreds actually, yeah. but it's actually cast concrete. It looks like it's it's stone block, right? You know, kind of empire style stone block, but yeah. it's actually cast concrete, um, which is a nightmare for maintenance. I'm sorry um, to hear that. But yes, it's, beautiful anyway. it's a beautiful <laughs> building and <laughs> highly used. I mean, the, yeah. the capacity is well, just packed at the gills. Then we have the Honolulu um, Doris Duke Theater, the Honolulu Museum of Art's Doris Duke Theater, which is two hundred right on the property, run, right the underneath, and that's yeah. uh, two hundred eighty seats. So yeah. we that's we do six nights a week. Of Film programming. Six a week. Yeah, we have over thirty thousand people who buy tickets a year there, so it's it's pretty big. And then we have Spalding House, which is a former contemporary museum, up the hill, right? And that was our founder's house, so Anna Rice Cook's house. So she had a house on Baratania Street, tore it down, built the 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 museum, and then up in Makiki Heights, she built her own house. It became the Contemporary Museum, and now it's the Honolulu Museum of Art at Spalding House, uh, named after her daughter who gave it to the museum the first time. And then we do all the public tours and the public access for Doris Duke Shangri-La, which is um, on, in Blackboard. Yeah, yeah. So you have to come to the museum. Uh, you have to get buy a ticket, then come to the museum, and then that's you can go up there. And then at First Hawaiian Center, we also have a quite large gallery well, for that's yours too. Yeah, for contemporary that's local very art. Nice. That's a really nice touch. Beautiful right space, yeah. and it's a way we can feature uh, really high quality local art and bring a little bit of art downtown. So. Um, we go in lots of directions simultaneously. Oh, that's the that's the role of museums these days, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you want to go I, I everywhere. You want to you have a presence everywhere in the community. Yeah, yeah, outside yeah. And there, there, people encounter us and have no idea that they're actually encountering us, and that's that's okay, right? Yeah. You know, there's tons of school outreach programs and. Oh, let's uh, talk about them. The outreach of school programs. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> big topic. Yeah. So just to give a scale, we do we serve more K-12 kids than the National Gallery in D.C. serves or MoMA New York serves. So um, the scale of our programs is really big. Um, just in Baratania Street, we have over 20,000 kids coming through a year on guided programs. And all the tours are specifically geared towards uh, curriculum objectives. So if you're trying to study history or you know, English, the, the art tour actually dovetails, helps the teacher meet the objectives they're trying to so teach. So it's like a course, and it's dedicated to you know, whatever that subject might yeah, be. Yeah, or, or that, that a teacher can say, okay, I'm studying math, I want to use the art museum to help us meet these benchmarks. So the tour will help the teacher 
meet her benchmarks for that class. So that's just the main museum. Uh, has school tour programs, and then we do also school tour programs that are what we call see art, make art. You spend time seeing art, and then you go across the street and make something, so that we reinforce what you've seen with making. Right? Connection, that's, yeah. yeah. That's you know, some people are learn by listening, some people learn by doing. So you get stimulated over here, and then yeah. do it there. And yeah. Then the whole the whole thing comes together. Exactly. Yeah. And then Spalding House is is all about art and a particular curriculum. So right now it's about math and art. So there's five small exhibitions that all deal with math and art in some way. For the casual visitor, it looks like five contemporary exhibitions. To the teacher, it's actually designed to help them meet their, their objectives. We're candidly on an all-hands-on-deck mode with our education system in Hawaii, and we want to do our part to make it better. Yeah, and it pays off. You were telling me before, and I was so surprised to find that the demographics are getting better and better and better. Well, the art museum, yeah. yeah, a better look. They're shifting, and they're shifting, shifting younger. In the so, right if, place. yes, would, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are your future supporters. Absolutely. And all so, that. the reality is, the Honolulu Museum of Art kind of is there for you, regardless of your age. So, you know, you're there as a kid, right, through school tours or Bank of Hawaii Free Family Sunday. You, we're there for you when you're trying to date somebody for Art After Dark, right, which is a huge driver of attendance and membership. You know, we're there for family Sundays when you have kids, if you've got kids. We're there for you when you retire, you want to have a lot, nice leisurely lunch. So the goal is really to be relevant to everybody during wherever they are in their life. And so, yeah, our membership is way up. We're up 48% um, this past year. So that's a, that's a big jump. We're at about 10,000 members. And most of those new members, the vast majority, are under 40. So we are grappling with, in a really fun and interesting way, with the rapidly falling demographic age of our, our guests. And you have um, to adjust for that. Sure. And you have to, you're overwhelmed by the need to serve them, so you have to... Well, you don't stop serving your existing audience, but you have to be very cognizant that, um, that uh, you, you, we do exhibitions that specifically cater to the younger audiences. I mean, something like Japanese erotic art um, that's about catering to younger audiences, yeah. the upcoming... I think I'll be up there shortly. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. You had good attendance there. Um, <laughs> I have a uh, very young mentality. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but that's, that's outside of our comfort zone. It was actually a really intelligent set of shows, but, but it, it, it also was risque, literally, and risky. Um, we currently have the Shangri-La exhibition, which is Islamic art. That kind of caters more to our existing historic crowd. So we serving all constituencies. My hope is that you come and you see something you love and something that kind of um, bothers remember, you. Yeah. yeah, you know, there might be something that makes so you uncomfortable. So how should too. I appreciate our appreciation? In other words, put me in the, the doorway. I'm okay, so the first of all, you want to become a member because it's 25 bucks for a year and we just steward you cheap. online. It's yeah. really cheap yeah. and we just send you stuff online, so it's not expensive to us. Yeah. Gets you in and out for free for a year. Um, so you would walk in and you'd say your name and it'll give you a little sticker. And that allows you to go anywhere in the museum. Cool. Okay? Great. And if you give a lot of money, we'll give you a gold sticker. And that makes us say, pay attention you still extra. Go everywhere. But you can go everywhere, exactly. <laughs> uh, so um, I think one of the neat things about the museum experience is that it's unprogrammed. You can go there and decide to look at Japanese art or art from Southeast Asia, or you can go there, so go there with intent, or you can go there just to randomly walk Flow around. through the gallery. Whatever you want. You can yeah. go through, I tend to go through museums really fast, um, but once in a while I want to go to a museum really slow, like just zoom in on a room. And we basically tell the story of art, 3,000, 5,000 years, right, of the history of art, um, with excellent examples from all around the world. It's kind of a, it's kind of an amazing kind of choices you have. Um, and if you want to be really intellectual, that's fine. But if you want to go there and chat with your friend um, and not look at a single thing, that's fine too. Social experience. Fine, great, super. Meet, bring your girlfriend. Why Absolutely. Meet girls. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have this, um, we changed our other membership. So it's 25 bucks basic membership, just gets you in and out. At 100 bucks, it's you plus one, and we don't care who you bring. That's great. Right? So if you want to bring a girlfriend, whatever, fine, great. Um, oh, a different. Girlfriend every time, if that's I, what you want. I don't care, right? You can do whatever you <laughs> want. It. That's your your call. You want to bring your mom one week, your girlfriend the next week, Beautiful your mistress idea. after that, fine. Yeah. Um, and uh, then we just went free for anybody under 18. So we're free for kids anytime they can get in for free. Um, and then when you do that, you don't need family membership because you've just signaled 
do it. It's free. So yeah. what we actually did is we developed the $25 price point based on what is reasonable to somebody who is working class here in Honolulu. And we thought $25 was reasonable for a year's access with their kid. If somebody's changing sheets at a hotel and they've got a couple of kids, great. It gets her in and out for a year and, um, no, and her kids can do two. reach the people. Well, this, that's what we're supposed to do, right? This is the customary approach in art museums. Well, it turns out if you reach the people, you also reach the donors. Turns out that most donors are actually more generous when you're doing your job well and reaching the people. These yeah. are sophisticated, smart yeah. people. Yeah. The last thing they want is to have the organization they love to become a dinosaur. Yes. Right? Right. So the... the, the they love to see the people there. They're, sure. The, the, the conclusion is, hey, uh, Stefan is really reaching out on this. He's bringing the community in. He's he's making he's doing the best possible. Let me let me, let me let me first say it's not me. There's 180 people on okay, staff, okay, so okay. it's 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 a team sport. Stefan but, and his friends. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, you have to signal that you're open in some way. Yeah. I mean, again, the school tours are most people who grew up here have experiences as kids at the museum. So you already it's part of your familiar. And then really, art after dark is when people rediscover it. We're getting between 1,800 and 2,500 people in three hours at Art After Dark. What is it? Uh, Art After Dark is an after-hours party once a month on Friday night from 6 to 9 at the, and museum. At the museum. And every, we have a theme, and every courtyard is basically has a different DJ or music. And the theme might be about you know, the Shahnameh, the Persian Book of Kings. Turns out that the under-40 crowd is totally game to learn about that. Right, so you bring in a DJ from Persian DJ from LA. You might have some Persian food, or whatever. And then the next month, you might switch it to be about Japan. Um, younger people. My head is exploding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, every and it's a huge operation. But so, if we get 2,000, 2,500 people in three hours, and we'll sell between 250 and 300 new memberships in three hours. Yeah. It's just a machine yeah. um, because it's a good deal. They right? Love it so they much. love it. You can you can pay 10 bucks to go in. Or you can pay twenty-five dollars and go in ten times because we do it ten times a year. Okay, that, that, that's, that's not, bad, not, that, bad, not bad. And then we get your email and contact information. So we yeah. thought that the young people would come in, join, forget about us. Well, they're renewing it over ninety percent rate. So they're renewing at a higher rate than our normal members are. We're going to take a short break. Fabulous, great. I warn you, when we come back, I'm going to ask you why. Okay, sure, <laughs> great. That's easy. Stefan Yost, uh, he's the director of the Honolulu. Uh, museum, museum of Art. Art, that's right. Okay, which is really an important role in this community. Uh, we're here on Community Matters, and we, we named this show um, a, a Great State Deserves Great Art. And it's very clear we got that here. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ethan Allen. I'm the host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. We talk about why people should like science, why science is actually fun, how science is a dynamic and vital part of everyone's life. Why everyone, every man, woman, and child on the planet should really know science, should love science, should be familiar with science. So it's a great show. People come on here and have interesting conversations with us. They tell us why they do what they do, why they love it, why we should love it too. I hope you'll join us every Friday, 1 to 2 p.m. And of course, you can see it anytime on YouTube. Aloha. Hi, my name is Andrew Howard. I'm an astronomer at the Institute for Astronomy at the University of Hawaii up in Manoa. I'd like to tell you about the annual open house that we're having. This year it is on April 6th, 11 to uh, 4 p.m. It's an all-ages event, kids, grown-ups, even uh, people in between, everyone is welcome. We have a lot of uh, really fun activities. You get to meet astronomers, look at yourself in an infrared camera, play with Legos, make robots look at videos. Um, you can even make it, some of the kids like to make comets out of uh, gravel and, and, uh, and snow. Even adults like to do that too. You'll be able to look at the sun with a solar camera uh, safely. It's really a great activity. We do this every year um, in April, and I hope uh, to see you this year. Thanks. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here with Stefan Yost. He's the director of the Honolulu, Honolulu Museum of Art. And we're talking about the museum, and we're finding out all kinds of incredible things about it how it is at the center in our community in so many ways. So the cliffhanger question is, right. why? Why are they all coming down? Why are these young people 
you know, gravitating, participating in the museum now? I think uh, there's a whole bunch of reasons. First of all, I think they're um, a generation that is uh, very, very visually literate. They're, the internet, visual imagery is just naturally part of who they are and how they think. That's the first thing. Yeah. I think they're also kind of what I call the Wikipedia generation, right? They love information. They're very kind of promiscuous in their information. They jump from one thing to another thing. They'll get deeply passionate about something. Historically, our audiences are, okay, these people like Asian art, or these people like contemporary art, or these people like art from Hawaii. I don't see any of that. I see people at that generation being interested in good art, right? They, they don't, they're, they're very just curious. But the other thing is that inherent in that is that art has become global. Absolutely. More, more, than, more than we ever imagined 20, 30 years ago. Yes. But Everywhere, I would, it's everything. But I would argue that art has been global for a long, long <laughs> time, you. right? I mean, it's just, look, the Impressionists were looking at Japanese prints. I mean, of course, you know, of course, the of course. intersection between Indian art and Alexander the Great is well documented, right? It's, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is not new. It's the speed is picking up, certainly. The yeah. speed is picking up a lot. Um, the other thing is we're trying to um, meet the younger generation their terms. So the first position I added when I joined the museum four years ago was somebody to full-time do social media. Their job is to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, eight hours a day to engage our, you know, 25,000 Facebook followers. That's, that's a lot. That's yeah, two and a half times great. your membership. Yeah, so yeah, yeah you got to, yeah, that's, that's important. And it means a lot these days. You don't even realize how much it means. Well, you oh, it's, I do. Absolutely. <laughs> I do. We, we placed a bet and it, it pays off a hundredfold. I'm, yeah. It, 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 the social media thing is real. Yeah. It's, it's how I communicate with my mom. I mean, it's, it's, I don't call her anymore. We Facebook, right? So, um, and that's just, uh, so, and what's interesting is we're seeing a lot of our older audiences embrace social media too. Facebook is actually a, an older generation social media. Than Twitter. Yes, yeah, yeah and Instagram. Yeah. That's our Twitter feed over there. There we if go. If anybody wants to talk to us, they can send us a message. Oh, I see. I got it. Think Tech High, H I. Okay, there we go. <laughs> right. It's, but it's, it's real. We had a great um, test of it. We had, um, and I won't say which one it was, we had a, a year ago or so an artist come in to give a lecture. And we had missed it internally. We forgot to put it on the calendar. So artist is coming in, but we forgot to put it in the newsletter. We forgot to do press release. We just. Because right, we've got so many events, we got you know, every event, every day there's multiple events going on. Sometimes one thing's going to drop. We realized three days ahead of time that we hadn't told anybody that this big Could artist is coming out. in, right? So it was the first real test of our social media, yeah. and we had 270 people for 280 seats in the theater, so it was full. So it was the first kind of time we were able to we kind of do. flex yeah. our muscles and yeah. say, yeah, yeah, is this yeah. this is just our are wishful thinking, or can we actually motivate these people? And it turns out we can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what happened? What, how did you do it? Uh, well, it's this. Uh, it's um, there's a whole bunch of ways you can use social media, and so you got to make sure that you know Instagram. It's all about the image. The image is key. You can write lots of text. It doesn't matter. It's a quick humor, self-deprecating. You know, all those things are good, and of course, it all works about sharing, right? So you have something. We have a program that we like. You pay attention to it, but you have to share it with your people. Otherwise, you're, 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 it's limited. So, yeah. And that's where kind of the skill of our communications team is there. Um, how do they make sure that? And I was going to ask you, uh, you know, in fact, I had lunch with my, my partner today before coming over, and uh, I told him you were going to be on the show. He says, yeah, but what does the art museum have to do with technology? Because he sees this big tech, right? Oh, oh yeah, I got it. Oh, well. And I told him. You'll see. Yes. <laughs> a lot to do. Where do we start, yeah, right? Right, right? I mean, right. there's, well, you, yes, there's this global side. Um, of course, I believe that film is great art, right? So I think the mission of the Doris Duke Theater, and they show films six nights a week, right? That's just about us showing great art in the same way we show great paintings, sure. right? Like on the wall, Yeah, thing. we do video art. We do, you know, all sorts of stuff. We Photographs. Have, photo yeah, but that's like 19th century <laughs> technology. <laughs> We're talking, right? Sorry, you know, that. one of our current shows, which is interesting, is the Shaname show, My right? Show so this is the Persian Book of Kings. Uh, Hamid Ramanian is the designer. So he takes old illuminated manuscripts from the whole Islamic world, whether they're Turkish or, you know, Indian, Mughal, or Persian, or whatever, the material scans there. them, yeah. then collages them, so you can have a mix, and he's telling this epic story. 
and the show is actually digital files that we printed out, right? So the originals, well, what's the original? It's a digital file. We print it out. We stick it on the wall at the end of the show. We throw it away, right? That's a really different way of looking at art. It's not about this object. It's about the digital file behind that object, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. Are we scared of technology? No. 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 And it goes back to your, your thing about uh, you know, how these kids, these millennials, are into the graphic arts because they live in a world of computer graphic arts. You can't communicate unless you've got good graphics. It just, you know. But you know what? I, I, let me offer a thought about this. A part of the, the miracle of the computer is that not only can you see it, you can do it. You can, you know, every, sure. every person around can actually create art. Uh, some yeah. do, some don't. But with a pencil and paper, you can do the same thing, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, true, sorry, true. but yes. But, Back to Lily Kona. Yeah, exactly. Well, they're all linked together, right? But yeah, there, well, you do, technology allows people, things that were very difficult are actually quite easy now, right? Um, that said, is to do it well is really hard. Okay. To do it really well. So cell phone photography. You know, everybody and their cousin has a cell phone with a camera. Very few are doing, are creating great images. When I was in college studying required course art history, mm -hmm. at 7 in the morning, it was really hard to stay up yeah. in the darkened room. Where was this at? Queens College, okay. yeah. City University. Um, you know, that was the question. How can you tell it's good? You say, good art. How do I know? Well, what? first first of all, it's got to be in comparison, right? Okay. You, you've got to okay. have more than one, right? So you know, oh, well, this is a really... So this match is a, it against the other. Yeah, yeah. right? Everything's about comparison. You have no yeah. idea that something sounds good unless you've heard it something else, right? So, okay. so the first thing is we, 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 I think humans are very pretty aware of good, better, best. We may, are making choices all the time, right? Choosing one over the other. Neiman Marcus is predicated on people understanding the difference between good, better, and best, okay. right? Right. Everything's okay. about that, right? Sure. So we, whether it's a car we select, I, you know, most people would say a, you know, Tesla is preferable to a, to a, whatever. Uh, whatever. Uh, yeah, got it. Name right. It. Yeah. yeah, that's not. Like, and then we get to art, and people are like, "How do you know? How do you know? Exactly, right? <laughs> One of the things I look at is who are the artists or the cultures that are framing questions, right? So there are lots of 19th century French artists, right? But the Impressionists changed how we see the modern world, and that's why we know them. There are lots of 17th century Dutch artists, like Rembrandt or Vermeer, right? We know them. Vermeer is my favorite. OK. I bet you can't name a single 18th century Dutch artist. Not offhand. No. But I bet you could actually name three or four 17th century Dutch artists. You're given enough time. Yeah, Rembrandt, <laughs> Franz Hals, Vermeer. OK, you got it, right? Check, check, check. Okay. But so, so there are periods where great things are happening, and then there's things, periods where it's, it's familiarity. It's, the, yeah, it's right. known by the community, the world. Sure, but it's also the, art the artists who are innovative. It's not just about doing it well. It's who helps us see the world differently. Like the Impressionist, yeah. giving us a new look at things. Yeah, Andy Warhol. Like him or hate him, the reality is he showed us to be a consumer society. And he celebrated that, true. which is 100% true, right? The reason people relate to Andy Warhol, why he's had extraordinarily so staying so <laughs> it's about consumer society and celebrity. Those are two things. You can like it or hate it, but he pointed out what has become totally obvious to us that other people hadn't seen. Right. Yeah, right. So it's the lesson of it. He gave us a lesson. He told us a truth that we were not really conscious of before. Most great artists are mirroring the society they live in with a degree of emotional honesty, intellectual honesty, and an ability to execute, to make it look in some sort of compelling way. So if, but if I don't know anything about Andy Warhol, I, I, that I go look at the Campbell Soup thing, it may not actually convey that to me. I have to see it in context. The chance that you don't know about Andy Warhol and don't know about Campbell's soup is about zero. That's true. Right. So there, you're are, gonna, there are people in this world who don't. Absolutely. Know. Absolutely. Uh, what, what do they do in order to determine whether it's great art? Well, it's about one of the nice things about a museum is it allows you the opportunity to self educate. People walk in and are totally baffled by things. And look, there's a label. There are fabulous docents. You have a question, we can answer it for you. You know, our docent team now is set up to meet the audience where they're at. So we used to say, OK, there's a tour at 11 o'clock for an hour about Asian art. 
Now we say, what do you want to see and for how long do you want to see it? You can do 10 minutes on Japanese art. You can do three hours on Japanese art. Our staff is trained, our docents are trained at a level that we're flexible. You create the menu, we fill it. Right? And they're there around you and you can there, there's call at upon least them five. You, are. you walk in and there's at least five ready to serve you. And if you want to be ignored, that's fine too. I love it. And, and what, you know, what the, the thread I'm getting in this discussion is something we talked about at the break. It's creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the museum is an expression of creativity, not only in the art, but in the way it operates. Sure, it should it be. Does, I mean, the way it reaches people. Yes. I mean, the, on the most basic level, we're about three things. About great art. Okay, got it. From lots of different time periods. We're about effective education programs, right? Yes. Are we actually conveying information and experiences that are meaningful to our public, right? And the third is a commitment to access. Can you get in? Like, you can do both those things well, but if nobody's coming, it doesn't matter, right? If you can have great access and great education programs, but if you don't have great art, it's probably going to fall in your face. Yeah, yeah. So it's those, getting those three things in line to move it forward, it's, it's not that complicated. But say access is conveyed in lots of different ways. There's ways you signal you're welcome, and there's ways you signal you're not welcome, right? And so you just have to be very self-conscious about that and very deliberate about how you, how you welcome people. There we go. Uh, it's yeah. a, really a study in that, isn't it? Because you want them to come in, yes, ekomamai, and see yes. my house, see my things. It's like like an art collector. Come in, yeah. take a look. Yeah, Let come on. Explain. This is we yeah. are an institution for <laughs> them. We serve are. the public, right? It's not <laughs> it's, about us. It's, it's on a larger scale than a single art collector, but that's the same. Yeah, no, idea. it's sixty-five thousand works of art. It's it's a huge collection. That's what I'm going to talk about after the break. Great. I'm going to talk about the collection. I recall there was a lot of what Chinese art to start. Somebody gave you a huge, right? Let's collection. have the conversation. <laughs> We're going to find out what they got in the basement. A lot. And then rotates. A lot. <laughs> but Stefan Yost, he's the uh, director of the Honolulu uh, Museum of Art, uh, a great institution in our society. We'll be right back after this break. Your mom and some <laughs> random lonely person. And this my puppy. Oh, we're back. Okay. There we go. We're back. Oh my. That's Stephanie Yost. We're having a good time during the break. Um, and we and with the cliffhanger here was exactly what is in the basement. Sure. We you know you got a huge collection. Let's talk about it. Okay, so um, first of all I should say up front, the goal of a museum is not to have the biggest collection, but to have the best collection. Okay, so okay. Uh, always put an asterisk there. You could have a fabulous museum with the National Gallery of London has like 2,000 things in the collection. So um, that said, is our collection is extraordinarily deep and rich in several areas. First of all, we've got kind of masterpieces, quote unquote, from all around the world from all time periods. You want something great Greek and Roman? We got it. You want something from Indonesia from the 19th century? Got it, right? Um, want a Van Gogh? Yeah, Monet, check, really right? Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have to get over there. You need to go to, sure. you need to get yourself I'm missing out. Yeah. Uh, um, Go, yeah, super. So collections tend to be formed in two ways. One is gifts to the museum, which um, people are very, very, very generous to the museum by giving art. And the other is art that we purchase, that we buy. So some people give us money or there's endowed funds to buy things. And so you're really trying to aim high, get the most compelling things. Um, and we are now at the point where about 97%, more or less, of the collection is in the storage vaults underneath, not on view. So the vast majority of, of what, maybe 3% is on view, um, which should give you a sense of the scale. And, and, uh, yeah, I want to talk about how you rotate that. But yeah. before we do, um, so you have various cultures yeah. from various collections, and people come to you and say, I'd like to give you this art. And yeah. you say, well, that, we like that art because that's excellent art. We yeah. want that art. We're you know, happy to take that art. Um, we actually say no. Thank you, 95% of the time. Is that right? Yeah, it's a delicate conversation. I'm but, sure it is. But, um, you know, you, you can have family lore where something is really important to the family, and or we may already have something that's not, or uh, we have something already, or it's in an area where we're not really trying to expand. We don't have the space to take everything and so forth. Yes. It's got to be relevant to our, 
our concept to our mission and our yeah. existing uh, yeah. uh, exhibit. Um, so, so the, the, the donors who give you this art, this yeah. excellent yeah, yeah. art, are they local? Are they from other places? What's the what's the both the mix? Both and yeah. I mean, if, so if I'm in Cincinnati and I have a really nice piece that I think will fit with your exhibit because I've been there a few times, yeah. and I call you up and say, you know, uh, you know, will, will you take this piece? Um, well, that's what happens, isn't it? Yeah, they yeah, call sure. you up from Cincinnati. Yeah, sure, think. wherever, yeah. yeah, or Tokyo or wherever it is, or people have connections to Honolulu that are, they are uh, people who say have been coming and every year and staying at the Hala Kalani and they want to kind of give something back to Honolulu. Yeah. They might do that. And um, they wanted to have a good home. Yes. Right? Yeah, we're so stewards. They have to see you as a good home. Yes, we're stewards of a collection, right? Yeah. Um, so that's 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 the other thing we're doing. It's not we're not just trying to have these collections to hoard them. We're trying to preserve the best of human cultures and histories. Um, because a lot of this art won't survive unless an organization is dedicated to preserving it. I mean, yeah. You you have destruction all yeah, over the place. Something out of the monasteries in, in Dark Ages, where they, they kept all sure. the books, knowing that one day, you know, there would be a, a great a great worldwide need for these books. Yeah, and they were right. Preserve them. Yeah. 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 But that takes some long-term thinking. It does. Yeah. Well, so you're engaged <laughs> in the same thinking. Yeah. Okay. Now, the second possibility you mentioned was where you'll buy. Yeah, sure. Or so, and uh, that means cash money, mm -hmm. uh, and probably you get this money. Do you get this money out of, a, out of a till you already have, or do you say, I want that art in Cincinnati, I want to buy that? Um, or, or Asia or Paris or wherever it is, I want to buy that. And, and uh, you go to a, um, a donor and say, you know, can you help me buy, can you help the museum buy this art in Cincinnati? We have one piece in mind. Can sure. you help? How's yes work? and yes. So there are endowed funds, and most of those endowed funds are, are specific to a certain area. Buy American decorative arts, buy Japanese works on paper, whatever. So we have certain amounts of money we have to spend like that. Um, and then the other is uh, we have money, uh, a work that we want to buy. And then the other thing is, is we sell artwork to buy other artwork. So, for example, if we have a Japanese print in our collection, it's good. And you come in and you give us a Japanese print, same subject, same artist, but it's great. We'll take the less good one and sell it because, again, our our job isn't to. Don't have you like to specialize, like 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 in poker, you know? Hey, oh, you want a, a straight a, flush? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but sometimes you want to go. You want similar things to make a point. Other times, it just it doesn't make sense actually. It's um, a judgment call. Absolutely, based but on, based on not these pieces necessarily, but the world of art around. Sure. You. Yeah, yeah. And so, we'll. Uh, so, for example, we recently had two paintings by the same artist from the same period and we sold one to buy another work by that artist from a different period, right? So you can say, oh, here's an early work by this guy, here's a later work by this guy. Which you didn't have, so yeah. therefore you're enriching the collection sure. by yeah. having the you're brought, you're, 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 um, The rule is, though, you can only sell art to buy art. You can't sell a work of art to pay a salary or utility bills or whatever. So it's earmarked? It's earmarked. If I get X dollars on the art I'm selling, and I take that same X dollars and, and you have to buy, buy it to buy something, something else. else. Yeah. So maybe so each transaction has a second transaction. Well, or or you can sell ten things to buy one thing. Yeah. 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 But yes, we're always That's buying. So interesting. It's like yeah. a, it's like a commercial activity which isn't commercial. No, you know? it's because it doesn't. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's um, we're not motivated. So we have extraordinary curators um, on staff, and they're smart people, right? They know what they're doing, and so it's this kind of like let's let's pull back the collection here in order to expand it over there. And there should be a reason why. Is this a big meeting or is it just a curator's decision? It depends. A lot of times you're under time pressure. So you, you the well, auction's coming up. For only so long, the auction's auction. coming up in twelve hours. Go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You better And can you go electronically or you have to get on a plane? No, I'll go electronically. There's certain things um, you want to certain certain things you really need to see in person. Um, certain things I before need. you actually make the bid. Oh, yeah. You want to see that it's what you think it is. Yes, and there's other things where it's not that big of a deal. You don't have to go see it. So it depends on what this it is. This is really exciting. How do I get to be a curator? Do you have curator classes at the, at the museum? Uh, no, we, we do a lot of continuing ed. Uh, <laughs> so I went to Hampshire College, which is a progressive liberal school. school yeah. 
in Amherst, Mass, I studied basically um, every kid has to design their own major. So I did art history, museum studies. I knew I wanted to be a museum director right? as an undergrad, as a freshman, actually. Wow, so for crazy. me, it was pretty fabulous. clear. Yeah. Um, and then you have to go to grad school, too. Um, and that usually is about a special. PhD. Uh, I don't have a PhD. I just have a master's. But the vast majority of people have PhDs in my yeah. position. And it's about specializing. And, um, and then, of, of course, um, uh, you have to work through the museum world. And it's incredibly competitive. There's very, very few jobs. Uh, yeah, it must be. So that <clears throat> if you, yeah, you have to work through it. And that means going from one museum to another. Mm -hmm. right? It's a step ladder, just like the opera. Directors of the or all performing yeah, arts sure. like that too. Yeah, move around the country. Uh, you get a set of experiences, and soon you can and make. You learn each time. Yeah, and you can make. You, it, uh, every move I've made, uh, I've learned just extraordinary things that, that I've been able to apply to the next place. So yeah. yeah. So you you bring your own perception of all this, and you incorporate that in the mission of the museum. Sure. So you put it together. So you it's a it's sort of a, it grows with with what you what you contribute to it. Yeah, and of course you have to be nimble and flexible and yeah. adjust your thinking well, based on where you're... How you sleep at night? This is fabulous. <laughs> it's good. Right? It's a you huge know? amount of work, right? Yeah. The thing, other thing you have to think about is the amount of fundraising I have to do. It's a huge part of, yeah. huge part of my... We do that here, but it's not the same scale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, but then, again, we have 180 people. We've got to pay every yeah. two yeah. weeks on payroll, Major. so... So you finding good support in the community? Yeah. Are you are you finding uh, you know like you're talking about the kids coming in? You finding the older and well-heeled contributors coming in? Absolutely. Yeah. No. We we have um, we have a really great board. We're very generous, um, and we have a lot of other people who are generous too. And then we have you know a really solid base of you know ten thousand people who are giving us money every year who are just whether it's a membership or something like that. You know. So, what is it about an art museum? What is it about your art museum, which I have a feeling it's different, you know? This is a, different than others. So although we're completely a private institution, yeah. there's a huge sense of ownership by the public. They really feel like this is their museum. And in many ways, it is. We're holding this museum and running it in trust for the public. Yes. So that I think that the scale of our education programs, it makes it very different than other museums. I think our... Uh, and this all comes back to Anna Rice Cook, her commitment to being publicly accessible. She says it at the ownership. opening. It's yeah, ownership. she she makes the statement in 1927 at the opening about wanting to make sure that this is a place where <laughs> the diverse cultures that make Hawaii their home can look at the other cultures and judge them by what is great from those cultures. Right? It's easy to judge a culture by by their weak points. Right? Yeah. So when she set it up collection she gave to initiate it was what, Chinese? We, no, encyclopedic. So she gave us, she, I mean, from Chinese, the, probably the best things were Asian, but there's many things that were Western and local as well. So she set up a really, a pretty big encyclopedic museum. From and the it was Gap. excellent. Yeah, I mean, she bought, I mean, the, the, the Gauguin we have is fantastic. And, and, and that was modern art at the time when she buys it. So yeah. she buys that in the early 30s. Oh, it's yeah. two nudes and a dog on a beach. That's pretty out there for 1930, right? Um, so, so we actually have a history of collecting contemporary things. We forget that, because we like to sometimes think of us as socialist conservative, but actually, we're not. We're not. So, um, yeah. yeah. So, it's a so let's talk about the, uh, you know, the movies for a minute, because I'm into movies, of okay. course, you know. Um, we talked at the, before the show began about the, uh, the, um, the Descendants, oh, yeah. and how it was a great piece of Hawaii ever. Yeah. Uh, and that, um, you know, however, it was made in Hollywood, it was made by Hollywood. Sure. We happen to be the venue for the movie, but not necessarily the... Well, the author's from here. Say? The author is from here. Yeah, yeah. the author is from yeah. here. Some of the actors were yeah. from here. And, and, you know, in large part, it's it was great. connected. Uh, they got the neighborhood wrong. I know that because I live in the neighborhood, one of the neighborhoods they were shooting, right. but that's yeah. okay, small yeah. stuff. Yeah. You, know, you see that on 5-0 yeah. all the time. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but, but there's another 10,000 stories out there. Sure. And so we have the film school. Uh, we have all these youth organizations that are making video. That I can think of three of them offhand. Yep. Uh, some of them are playing regularly on, on the cable. Um, and we have the museum, which is a sure. sort of a distribution source for, for video. Sure. So we have film, yeah. So um, we have 
actually probably the last film projector on the island. We also oh, have the right? digital, we have the DCP, we have the high tech, we have the high tech one too. But uh, uh, so every month there's a film festival, which is basically anywhere from one to four weeks. So whether, you know, so you can see the Filipino Film Festival just ended, right? The Jewish Film Festival was before that. The African American yeah, Film Festival yeah. was before that. Bollywood is really big. So every month there's a, a theme where we kind of go to that part of the world and bring in the best art and filmmaking that they're making in that so uh, area. So we do 12 of those a year. And then the second part of the month, we, we tend to show kind of the best independent movies that we can find. So it's actually been a pretty darn good process. Um, and you know, six nights a week of, of kind of art house film programming is a lot. Um, and it, we bring but in. But you're filling the place. We're not filling it, no. But we're 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 making money on it. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, absolutely. Yeah. So, and and you you know you offer a, a place for distribution by local filmmakers. Yeah, yeah, sure. This is really important. And and the other thing we we just um, my colleague Hathaway Jacobson, who used to work at Sundance Institute, brought in kind of the what they call the short lab, which is so these are the top people at Sundance who help young filmmakers make short movies. You got to make a short movie before you make a long movie, right? And so Some we had, way short movies are harder. Yeah. You have to get to the point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got but, but you learn a lot in that process. So we brought in their top people to meet with a couple hundred local people who want to make films. So it, in the same way that we try to inspire local sculptors or painters, we have a role in inspiring local filmmakers because film is just another art to us, right? It's just another art sure. form. So that's kind of a step that we've just recently been doing. So do you see Hawaii, I, I mean, I, 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 my question starts with film, but it really wraps around everything. Do you see Hawaii as being a creative center for the fine arts and the video arts? I mean, are we, are we on the road somewhere to becoming uh, a, a center of creativity for the fine arts and the, and the I, arts. Great question. Um, first of all, places emerge usually because a relatively small group of people push each other, right? The Impressionists, it's a dozen people in Paris. There's lots of stuff going on in Paris, but there's... They all they, knew each other. They all, well, more than knew each other. Yeah, they were really pushing each other. They were, yeah, great artists know other great artists. Picasso and Brock were hanging out, right? Ansel Adams and Georgia Keefe were hanging out, right? Um, Van Gogh and Gauguin were hanging out. So the first question is, is, do we have great artists who are hanging out with other great artists? That's a really... Is it happening? Um, I think we've got the potential. I don't think we're there yet, with one exception, which is tattooing. I think really? that, in general, the tattoo artists in Honolulu are very competitive with each other, but they're functioning at an international level. There are individual artists here in other medium who are doing well, who are really good. But the tattooing tends to be um, at kind of a world-class level. And they're yeah, defining it. Something. We did, we yeah, did. Yeah. Because why it's not? Art. It's art. It's, it's right. <laughs> right. It's good art. That's what we're, we're interested okay, in, good art, right? Yeah, so okay. so that, you know, how do we create a, a situation where artists are aspiring to be great? That's kind of important. Yeah. And um, I'm... So we can do this. And these kids who are coming in, these millennials that you talk about who are joining in droves, oh, yeah. they could be not only appreciators, but sure. creators. Well, here's the little, the devil in the detail. Usually, when something amazing happens culturally, the place which is hosting it doesn't know it at the time, right? It's not like people in Paris were going, oh, there's these amazing new avant-garde yeah, yeah, artists, yeah, right? Yeah, they were yeah, going, sure. who the heck are these people, right? right so right, right, so right. it's just one of those things where it could very well be going on right now, and we might not know it for a little bit, right? If, if anyone would know it, those definitely you would know it. Or our curators, yeah. yeah we'll yeah, we'll yeah, get yeah, there, yeah. You're certainly I, optimistic I, I think, anyway. So yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> I am. I do think there's some really extraordinary um, uh, people. And, well, you know. with a museum that acts as a center, to bring yeah. everyone together, yes. To have them, you know, create that special, the special synergy that you talked about in Paris. Yeah. Um, we could go somewhere, and uh, it's just a matter of watching you. So, if you don't mind, I'd like to do this on a regular basis. Sure, great. You tell stock, me. Yeah. What's, what's coming? What's going? Who's yeah. doing what? You know, yeah. It'd be great. It'd be great. Great. It'd be great. Stefan Yost, he's the director of the Holland Museum of Art, and we are so delighted to have him on the show. We want to do it again and again here on Community Matters, a great state, as you know, deserves great art. Where's this tattoo parlor again? <laughs> <laughs> Good one.